Hi, everyone. Welcome to Kiki and Kibitz. It's Mary, and I'm here tonight with a very special edition of 90 Day Fiance Last Resort. I have a little bit of tea for you guys. You may wonder who is this very handsome, gen handsome gentleman on screen with me. We'll get into that in a second. So for you guys that have been listening and following me and reading my um, articles on wordonthestreetreality.com, we've been doing a deep dive into Molly Hopkins and her relationships. First, there was the breakup with Cynthia, her business partner. Then there was the breakup with Kelly Brown and her and Kelly are actually on Last Resort, which is airing right now on TLC, trying to work out their problems during a couple's therapy session. Now, as you guys all know, Molly and Kelly first started dating on 90 Day Fiance Single Life. This is where this gentleman comes in. I would like to introduce everyone to Stephen Daniels. Thank you so much, Stephen, for joining me. How are Hello. you tonight? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing, Mary? Good, thank you. Now, Stephen and I started talking in the beginning of the year, and I just want to thank you for joining me tonight and having the and having the brave the the morals and coming and you know and and being brave enough to come forward to tell your truth. Okay, because I know that there's been a lot of things going on in your life. And I want to thank you for sitting down with me tonight. Now, I want to ask you, Stephen, where and when did you first meet Molly Hopkins? Oh, wow. Um, it was a long time ago, like before COVID hit. I say we was talking maybe nine months before COVID really hit. Um. We was dating for a while, so. So we're talking um, early 2000? Yes, early like 2000. Um, I can't give it time, maybe like a month, you know. It's just like early so 2019, okay, so, so COVID hit 2020. So we're talking 2019, early 2020? I think the late 2019. To okay like the middle of 2020. Okay. So did you watch 90 Day Fiance at all before you started dating, before you met Molly? Did you watch yeah. 90? Okay. I've seen it a couple times. Okay. So who were you familiar with on 90 Day Fiance? Like who were the cast of characters that you knew of? Just her and um, her partner. He they sitting on, uh, I think it was a uh, little talk. So that's that's when I first seen her on Pillow Talk. So okay, so how were you um introduced to Molly? How did you meet her? Uh, actually, I just reached out. You know, I messaged her. You know, I thought she was beautiful, so I messaged her, and uh, she didn't answer right away. It took me a few times, but she responded, and I guess she liked what I had to say, and we started communicating, and it just went from there. So, um, what was your first date with Molly? When you first met her in person, where did you guys go? What was it like? Well, she picked me up from the airport. Um, we went and um, had something to eat at like a Korean barbecue place. It was really awesome. And uh, and then we went and saw uh, a movie, uh, The Invisible Man. We went okay. so that that was out. It just came out. Okay. Actually. So, okay. Um, we went and seen that, and we just drove around a little bit. Um, and we went to her house. Um, I met her her little daughter, and um, we just hung out and just had a good time. So, what was your first impression of her? Oh man, I was I was impressed. You know, uh, her spirit, uh, her energy, her aura around her was just awesome. You know, I just 
I just thought that she was great. You know, she was pretty. Uh, she had a very soothing voice. So, you know, I was just really impressed with her. So you guys had a long distance relationship? Yes. How often would you see each other in person? Just a couple times. But um, before then, we talked for like uh, seven, eight months, just FaceTiming each other all the time and just constantly just building up that that bond, you know. So when we first met each other, it was already solid. He was on solid ground. So it was just a matter of us just just embracing each other. And it was great. Right. So at the point that you met Molly, you had already built a relationship with her on the phone, FaceTiming constantly. Yeah, for sure. Right. Okay. So um so you would talk to her constantly throughout the day. So you got a sense of what her her life routine was like with the shop and everything else. What do you uh, do for a living? Um I work for Power 104.9. Uh, radio station and plus I own uh, Giovanni Sweet Italian Ice um, and I flip houses and stuff so you know I just got an entrepreneurial spirit right exactly um, do you have any children have you ever been married I got adult children so you know but single though okay um, did you meet her um, her um, older daughter um, Olivia I never met her personally, but she talked a lot about her. Okay. So you mentioned that you met um Kensley on that first night. Did you get to spend more time with Kensley? Yeah, I spent time with them, you know, uh, just, you know, a couple times. And, and, and it was just beautiful. It was beautiful every time. Uh, Kensley was very nice and polite. And, you know, it was just, I thought everything was great. Our personalities matched up, you know. Um, we like singing while we listen to music in the car. It's just, I just thought it was right, you know. Everything just was perfect for my eyes, you know. Right. Um. What was your impression as Molly as a mother? Awesome. Awesome. She really loves her kids. Uh, you know, she take care of the little ones. Like, her life is, you know, revolved around taking care of Kenzie. And so, you know. Um, yeah, she was very hands-on, you know, she's a great mom, I must right. say, right. from everything I have saw and, and know of her, I know that she's a great mom. Did you ever get the impression or did Molly ever request from you that she wanted you to step in and help her take things off her plate, whether it be financially um, like in a physical way or in any way, because one thing that Molly mentions on TV that she wants a man to come in and help her take things off her plate. Did you ever well, get that impression from her? No, I mean, you know, she was a hard worker. I know she was about her back, you know, and, and I always appreciated that because I like to hustle too and get to the bag. So I, I felt that we had that in common. Um, you know, when COVID hit, you know, things got pretty hard for everyone, you know, and, right. uh, her not doing the show and, 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 you know, and not being able to have customers and stuff. So things got pretty tight, you know, financially for, for a lot of people. So, you know, uh, yeah, things was tough for everyone. Um, did you ever go to the shop? Did you ever have a chance to go to the Libby Ray lingerie shop with her? Yes, I met I met her sister that worked there and some of the people that worked there. Um, it was a nice place, real comfortable. It felt like home, like you like got a real home feeling when you walked in. Did you ever get to meet her um former um partner Cynthia? Ah, uh, yeah, Cynthia. Um, uh, I love Cynthia. She's great. She's awesome. Um, <clears throat> every time I called and FaceTime, like Molly was at work, Cynthia was right there at her desk working at the sewing machine doing her thing. She was always polite and kind. She's just she's just an awesome person. I really do adore her. Um, so how serious was your relationship with Molly? Did you want to marry her? Did it get to that point? Yeah. Well, we was talking about that. 
I was truly in love with her. And we was talking about it and talking about rings, what type of rings he was wanting. And we were sending pictures to, you know, the type of rings that, you know, that she liked and stuff back and forth. And, you know, and I got to the point where, okay, I went out and purchased one. And I was about to question eventually, but we just never made it to that point. Do you think Molly was as serious about the relationship as you were? <laughs> I don't think so, you know. I mean, I don't know for sure. I just, in my heart, I feel that it was one-sided. I, you know, that's the way I feel, but I'm not sure. When did you find out about Kelly? Um, well, after she broke up with me. Um, Why did your relationship with her end? What What was the reason she gave you for breaking up with you? You know, um, the reason she gave to me because that, you know, during COVID, you know, she was having some 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 financial issues. Things was tight for her, and it was tight for everyone. Here's the deal. Excuse me. I have to go back a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. So, when I was down there visiting, she had a contract that says, she told me she had a contract to do the single show. And she was on a contract. Right? Okay. So me and her dating. And she said, she just mentioned and said, we'll talk about it later on that day. She never brought it up again. So she left me feeling that, you know, Maybe she's going to approach me with it, or she left me thinking that she was involved with someone else and she was going to do the show with someone else because doing out the whole, you know, um, relationship, you know, she kept asking me, you know, you secure, right? You're not a jealous type of man, right? And I'm like, yeah, I'm secure, you know, I'm a man, you know, I'm securing my shit, you know what I'm saying? So, and, um, and so when she brung at that, that's that's the app uh, that uh, the contract that she had with TLC about doing this single show, and um, and she never brung it up again. So months went on, she just never brung it up again. So I just felt that at the time that that she had someone else that she was going to do the show with, because. If she's dating me and if she's doing a single show, who else should be on the show, right? This is my woman, right? Exactly. <laughs> you, know, you should be on the show with her. Exactly. Hey, this is my woman, right? So right. who else should be on the show but your man? So she never bung it back up, which, you know, I ain't the type of guy that like to pry, you know, but it just left me wondering, you know, what's going on. So here I'm thinking in my head that there was somebody else on the side that she was going to do a show with. I mean, because she never brought it up to me, and I'm the guy that she currently dating. I'm going to propose to and everything. So, uh, well, with that being said, uh, you know, time got tough. COVID hit. Uh, you know, financial things, you know, got tough. And, you know, and she didn't, like, bluntly ask me for money, but I think she was hitting around to it that she needed gas and, and I just never volunteered to send it to her because right. I work really hard for my money and if you dating someone else then you know I'm not gonna be that sucker, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna be that dude that be that be sending his money off to someone that's not serious about it, you know what I mean? So I work really hard for what I have. And so, you know, I just never offered and and then since since I didn't offer seeing them just breaking it off with me. So that's that. You know, I tried after that, you know, I tried to get back with her several times, but you know, just you know, it just she never came. So when was the last time you have spoken to her? Um the last time we talked is when uh Her and Kelly broke up. Her and Kelly broke up. We we reunited a little bit. We talked. We was talking every day, and you know, you know. And I'm thinking that man, maybe there's a possibility again, you know. And and then we was talking every day. I guess she maybe just needed you know, someone to talk to, but 
um, I thought that we was going to, you know, make try to make it work at it again. But, um, you know, she just ghosted me from that point. I don't know. We, we talked strong for like a week straight, FaceTiming, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and then next thing you know, she just ghosted me. Just, she wouldn't take my phone calls. Not, I don't know. Mm. Because now she's currently dating a um prison kingpin. That's my nickname for him. So, um, did you watch Molly and Kelly on Single Life when it aired? No, I didn't watch it. I don't watch the show or anything like that. I just try to just go on and do me, and you know, right. so not to pay attention to what she's doing in her life. Um, but I must say, you know, um. I spoke with Kelly a couple times. You know, we try to figure out the timeline between it all, you know, and, you know, um, I feel sorry for what Kelly's going through. If he didn't do it, you know, definitely. But if he did it, then, you know, then he got what's definitely coming to him, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I don't know what happened because I wasn't there. You wasn't there. No one was in it. The people who was there only know what happened. Exactly. But if it didn't happen like the way that she indicated, then I definitely feel sorry for him. But if he did it, then, you know, then he should be facing consequences for that. Right. Then, uh, so um, what is your purpose of sitting down now to tell your truth about what about what happened between you and Molly? Like, well, what do you want to happen as a result of this interview? Uh, you know, I just, I don't know. I mean, I don't want anything to happen. I really don't care at this point, but, um, you know, I, I must say that I must put this out there. And I, mm -hmm. the time that I spent with her, even when we broke up and it was a year past and she was with Kelly actually, and my dog passed away, and and me and my I was really tight with my dog. I mean, he was like my son, you know, it was really close. He passed away, and I was going through something emotionally. And I texted her a year later. Uh, she FaceTimed me immediately, talked to me and comfort me, and you know, and, and you know, sort of held my hand through that, you know. What I'm saying so, I, I must give her a big shout out. She's always been a comforting soul. Um, the time that I spent with her and the time that I experienced with her personally has always been positive. She always been a positive person other than her breaking my heart, you know, right. everything is positive with her. So when everyone says this and that about her, you know, all these bad things about her, I truly never personally experienced that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is really being honest with you. I never experienced any of that type of side of her. I only knew one side of mine. And that was the love inside, you know. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to, you know, to put that out there. Of course. But when Molly sat down and broke up with you and then you discovered all of this stuff afterwards, that was another side of Molly that you never saw. And that's the side that kind of shattered, you know, the good girl image that you had of her, Right. Well, um, I must say this. Um, a lot of people are saying a lot of things about her that I never experienced. Um, you know, I just never experienced that particular side now, you know, other than the fact that, uh, she had a relationship with Kelly and that didn't work out and, and, and she's dating this other guy. I mean, I, I just don't know. I mean, she haven't did anything to affect me negatively. So, you know, um, other than just break up with me, you know, but, right. um, you know, I, I can't say if she cared about me or not. I don't know for sure. Excuse me. I don't know if she was playing with my heart or I don't know for sure. I would like to think she was genuine. You know, but from all the rumors and everything that's been going on, been saying otherwise, you know, that, you know, this is just something that she, and it's a pattern, 
So, right. and, I mean, from all the gossip and stuff, but I don't know that for sure. And I can't say that because, you know, I haven't experienced that. And, you know, and I just don't really want to say anything negative about it. Right, exactly. I don't really blame you for- because at one point in your life, this was someone you really cared about and you love and, and you didn't really see these things that people I, I are saying. None of it, you know what I'm saying? Because she's never display that type of behavior to you know when I was around or, or anything it's just I just always saw you know the beautiful person that she was you know and you know I just feel sorry for everything around that whole situation you know for everyone that's involved right um uh, Cynthia you know saying uh, her partner uh, her ex-partner um because he's such a lovely person, you know. So I just think that everyone that's involved is just has been stressful and and it's just been crazy, you know. But uh, I just wish her Molly was, you know, the best. You know, I, I just hope she find happiness and, and 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 just wish the best for her and her family. Exactly. I moved on, you know. what I'm saying so, you know, still single, but I moved on, you know, and. and uh, you know, and that's life. all we can do for everybody that's involved in a sad situation and just wish them the best and everybody just move on the best they can and just live their life. Um, If Molly is listening right now, do you have a message for her before we go? Um, No, no, I just, you know, just wish no her message. the best. Just wish her yeah, the best. Just, and Just wish her the best, you know, and 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 may God continue to keep his arm wrapped around her and her family, you know, and, and I, I just wish her success. You know, I have no ill will because she never done anything to me personally at all other than break my heart. You know what I'm saying? And and, and that's on me, I guess, because, you know, right. my mama said I wear my heart on my sleeve, you know. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing well, wrong with well, that. Thank yeah. you so much, Stephen. I really appreciate you sitting down with me telling your truth and you know just letting the fans know what's up i appreciate it yeah appreciate you having me on here thank you mary thank you thank you so much steven i'll talk to you soon bye